Right, let's do a woody scene. Back to basics again. We work our way back into the new year. Wet the paper all over. It's a Fabriano. £130 paper that Stephen Cronin put me onto three years ago. It's a very inexpensive paper. It's, it's good for wetting wet and we, we buy it because it's, it's cheap. You can use what paper you like. If you want to use expensive arches to learn them, if you're rich enough, go for it. Do that second little bit. The two inch hake, the Von Ranson hake, is a great brush. It does a lot of marvellous things. It does a lot of horrible things as well. But they're inexpensive. Right, I'm, uh, I'm going to put a bit of a warm sienna wash over the whole, whole lot and I'll put a bit of a background in. The board's about 30 degrees. Uh, the, the paints are Cotsman watercolours, Winsor Newton, 21 milliliter tubes, 21 mil. Um, they are economic, nowhere near the, uh, the saturated colour of the artist quality of course, but they're much, much cheaper. And the whole purpose of using cheap, large tubes of paint is that you don't feel as if you're being too generous with the paint, you can afford to dump it out in your palette. The, the, the original Romanson method was to use a, a butcher's tray that size, a large one, and squirt out the Cotsman watercolour, the, the way the colours you choose, and paint with them in tube consistency, which I like. But if you carry on like that, you've got to really uh, clean the paint off at the end of each session, but this way, by putting the, 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 the dubbed out colours in a Ziploc bag, they, they stay fairly moist overnight or till your next painting session. You can always spray them with a bit of water and they're ready, ready to use. It's a bit of a compromise, but it means that because they're cheap, they're, these the ones I'm, I'm using at the moment were less than three pounds in tune and you don't feel too stingy about putting them out in that sort of quantity. They last a long time anyway. But if you were using more, um, student quality, you, you would tend to be a bit mean with them. So a bit, bit of background, so with a bit, bit of blue and a bit of, bit of lemon yellow. And we'll just put, put that in all over because we're going, to, we're going into the wood. And a bit of alizarin. Blue, bit of red. We can put a bit of a stream in, a bit of a woody stream. And we'll have some dark in there, so light red, ultramarine, bit of bit of green, three primaries. Let's just get that in. And we can etch with a fingernail into that, but you need the dark background to be able to do that. So we're just putting that in, all nice. We can have a bit of warm sienna. I like uh, uh, burnt sienna. It's my sort of eighth colour. I'm using uh, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey, and the burnt sienna is a bit of an extra. So I get nice, nice colours, nice shadowy colours. Good, good bit of blue in there, a bit of a laser on. Try to keep a bit of a central area a bit lighter. Okay, that looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? Great. Not worried about that at all. So we'll put in some water in here. Okay, and while that's nice and wet, we'll reclip the paper. This is the fun bit of watercolour wet in wet painting, so let's just get some of this
Well, you can use a card for that if you wish. It's only old plastic card. Texture, just get some in the background here. Nothing like overdoing it. If the paint's too dry, because you, you can't do it, but if it's too wet, then the paint fills into the impression you've made in, into the paper. Um, let's just okay. Let's put a bit of well, that's dry. Let's put a bit of foreground in. Nice bit of whoops. Nice bit of persienne, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of red. This will give us a side side of the, the banks of a sort of stream and we can do some some etching, put some rocks into that as the paper dries a bit. Nice red, blue, <coughs> a bit of green even. Not using Payne's grey. I don't want to, to deaden. Well, Payne's grey can be a bit of a deadener. So I can, I can get a nice dark colour. I can use burnt umber. It just got a bit dry, but get my darks in. Nice and nice and moist. Right, card, and let's just put it flat. I'll put some detail into the background in a minute. Great impression of of rocks with a car, but like everything, you can overdo it. Just do too much of it, which I'm doing. But okay, some glasses, and bits of stuff, just elementary stuff. Uh, nice bit of rocky, rocky landscape there. That'll do, that'll do, no more. <coughs> right, now bring the, the hake back together again, finish my tea. This is where I started with the hake painting washing on ransom ooh, 30 odd years ago. You can use uh, the little trunks in, in woods are green, aren't they? They're greeny grey rather than just a dark bluey grey. We can put light on one side and dark, show some. A uh, burnt umber and ultramarine gives a good dark, so let's just put the dark in on one side. Bit of bigger in a minute.
how some of that triggers for a bit of light. Amazing what the card can do, the impressions that it could give. Okay. Now we'll put some bluer ones in on this background here. I'm not going for any actual finish. I'm not don't want to turn this from a sort of an impressionist freestyle painting into something more graphic. You know what I mean? Oh. Let's have some going all the angles. As the paper dries, you'll you get the, the dry brush effect coming in. Just put in some of this here, but not a lot. We'll do some. A little bit of reflection in some of that. Right, let's get some of this. With the cards, you can turn these quite quickly into silver birches. Just a touch of water in there. Just burnt umber and Payne's grey. This lake is splitting in the middle. Isn't it? Sun's coming up. Many of you are um, thinking about uh, Harry, the kitten. He's uh, been turned into a eunuch because as we speak today, we're going to pick him up later. Probably won't talk to me. Right, well, we'll use the ribbon in a minute. Uh, we're into the sort of tree. Ooh, I've used base grade, I don't mean to. Rigor. Uh, there it is. So let's just bring some of that. I tried to give a bit of an impression of the tumbling stream, but that won't show many reflections. But we're all in the these bits here. Uh, 
Just a bit of this, a bit of that. Texture on the dry brush. Enough's enough. Just put a signature on it. I've got a mysterious figure in blue and red. Probably just a little bit too broad, but I won't put a large coat. Okay. Right, said too much Sunday lunch or oh, Christmas Christmas pudding. Right, we'll put that in a mount and I just got a bit of tape just to hold it on the board. Now, let's have a, a light, a light coloured mount on there. Maybe not. Oh, maybe. Okay, so there we are. Just a, a very simple woodland scene that you can do yourself. Maybe that needs just a little bit of heavier detail, a warm detail, so a bit of blue, a bit of burnt amber, a bit of uh, burnt sienna. Right, that no more, no one to stop really. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, let's uh, bring you around and you can have a little look at that. And we'll zoom in. An old pot, pot boiler. All right, that looks fairly wet. So we've got the rocks, a bit of grass etched in. Uh, we come up to the trees and I'll come across the top. I've done the absolute minimum, really. I think on this. A nice bit of warm colour in there, and then we're down to there and zoom out. They're good fun to do these sort of paintings. They're ve they're very easy, but don't get discouraged if 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 all your your colours merge into one. It's knowing how much water to have in the hake and knowing when to hit the paper, so that it registers and doesn't bleed bleed out to nothing. But that's only experience will teach you that. I can only do what I do, but you have to put the work in and, and learn yourself by doing many of these type of paintings. And, and really, it's just practice. You, you'll be able to do it far better than me. Just keep at it. Don't give up. Bye-bye.